When they saw the sailors eating melon, they thought that it was human flesh and gave them the name Akuawaha Ulaula, or Red Mouthed Gods. They believed the tri-cornered hats of the officers were part of their heads and the sailors' clothing their skin with holes in the sides from which they drew treasure. The people seemed friendly to Cook, despite a troublesome propensity to steal. Once they realized that stealing would not be tolerated, they began to trade sweet potatoes as large as 14 pounds for nails and other pieces of iron lowered to them on ropes by the sailors. Some scholars believe, as did Cook, that in the 16th century, Spanish ships en route to the Philippines and ports farther west introduced the Hawaiians to iron, while other historians insist that the natives' familiarity with metal came from scavenged wreckage. If a log with iron nails washed ashore, it was by tradition offered to the gods, that is, to the priests, who then presented it to the Ali'i Nui. Kamehameha I is said to have first uttered the proverb, Oluna olalo okai o uka, oka hau pai koke ali'i ia. Above, below, seaward, inland, the iron that washes ashore belongs to the chief. A small nail could get the British enough pigs to last them a day, and they soon had as many stores as they could carry, which was fortunate as the supply of iron that they could spare was fast diminishing. On HMS Discovery, Captain Clerk was honored with a visit from a high chief, which caused the Hawaiian men already on board to leap into the ocean. The curious chief was polite, but his attendants, upset that Clerk had clapped him on the shoulder in greeting, kept their distance, refusing to allow the chief to step all the way on deck. The chief's large double canoe slid unconcernedly over the small canoes of commoners and lesser chiefs, many of whom quickly threw themselves onto the bottoms of their canoes or jumped into the water to submerge their heads. Cook himself noted, Three things made them our fast friends, their own good-natured and benevolent disposition, gentle treatment on our part, and the dread of our firearms. By our ceasing, spelled C-E-A-S-E-I-N-G, to observe the second, the first would have worn off, spelled O-F, of course, and the too frequent use of the latter would have excited a spirit of revenge, and perhaps have taught them that firearms were not such terrible things as they had imagined. They are very sensible, spelled S-E-N-C-I-B-L-E, of the superiority they have over us in numbers, and no one knows what an enraged multitude might do. When one of the Hawaiians could not resist the theft of a butcher's cleaver and jumped overboard with it, Cook did not hesitate to send boats after him, under the charge of an Irishman named Williamson. When Williamson fired at the man, the Hawaiians who were on board Cook's ship took fright and dove into the ocean, but the thief swam safely to shore and disappeared. Lieutenant Williamson had also been given the task of finding a watering place on the island, and as he approached land, natives rushed into the surf and jumped into the boats, grabbing the muskets and oars, causing Williamson again to shoot at them. This time a Hawaiian was killed, and there was no further trouble. As early as the second day of his landing, Cook took precautions to keep the venereal disease that was manifest among his men from spreading to the Hawaiians. As there were some venereal complaints on board both the ships, in order to prevent its being communicated to these people, I gave orders that no women, on any account whatever, were to be admitted on board the ships. I also forbid all manner of connection with them and ordered that none who had the venereal upon them should go out of the ships. But whether these regulations had the desired effect or no, time can only discover. It is no more than what I did when I first visited the friendly islands, Tonga, yet I afterwards found it did not succeed. 
Cook gave orders that only one man accompany Lieutenant Williamson ashore to replenish the ship's supply of fresh water, that I might do everything in my power to prevent the importation of a fatal disease into this island, which I knew some of our men now labored under, and which unfortunately had been already communicated by us to other islands in these seas. The village of Waimea had perhaps sixty houses near the beach, 